In this demo series, we're going to go through how to set up a continuous integration and continuous delivery environment on OpenShift using uh, regular components that we usually use in uh, Java development, for example, using Maven, using Jenkins as the CI CD engine, Nexus repository for the artifacts, Sonar Cube for static analysis, and so on. And uh, in the first part, we're going to look at how to set up this environment on top of OpenShift. Uh, to go through how the environment is going to look like after we set this up is that uh, we have a couple of components uh, involved. First, we have the Git repository where we're going to keep our source code. Uh, we can use GitHub for this purpose and we also have a version of that that uses uh, uh, GOGS, the Git repo that is written in Go. Uh, we're going to use that on OpenShift to see how we can run the entire thing end-to-end -end on OpenShift. We're going to have Jenkins, of course, that is driving the whole thing. Um, and we'll have Sonar Cube as the static analysis thing, it's backed by a Postgres database. Uh, they're going to be Nexus repository also that when we build our artifacts, we push them into this. So, how does the pipeline going to look like when we set this up? We're going to be Jenkins uh, taking out the source code, cloning the source code from the Git repo, regardless of if it's GOGS or uh, uh, GitHub. Then we do a parallel uh, task. We At the same time, we run the unit test, but since we want to save time, we run the code coverage and static analysis at the, at the same time through Sonar Cube and publish the result inside Sonar Cube. So when the tennis tests are finished, uh, we can go look at at the same time uh, how much coverage I've had with the test, uh, have we violated any of our code quality rules, and so on. And if the test fails or if the code cover if because of the code coverage or some other criteria we fail the static analysis then the pipeline is not going to execute any further. If both of them were successful, then Jenkins is going to archive the artifacts in Nexus, going to push them in Nexus, the jar for the war files in this case, uh, with the version that they have. And from that point, if that step is also successful, going to trigger an image build in OpenShift. So we have the artifacts for our application, and Jenkins is going to trigger a build on OpenShift, so OpenShift build a Docker image of that war file that we have built in the process and we have pushed into Nexus. When the image is ready, we're going to create the application as a Docker container on OpenShift, deploy the application on that, run a couple of integration tests, and if that is successful, we're going to promote the image, tag the Docker image with, with the version that we want in our staging environment, and recreate that container in the staging environment to, for example, notify the testers to go test it in the staging environment. So let's go through the steps, see how we can set this thing up from scratch. We have the entire instructions for uh, running this demo and setting this environment up on uh, GitHub on OpenShift demos slash OpenShift CD demo. And you'll see the exact pipeline, how does that look like, and the series of steps that you need to go through to set this up. It's pretty much a few, uh, it's not that long. Uh, if you look at my OpenShift environment and having this uh, local environment, uh, there is no project set up on it yet. So we're going to start by creating some projects for uh, uh, spinning up our Nexus, Jenkins, and other components that we need. Let's see, new project, call it CICD. Also give it a nice name so it shows nice in the, in the web console. All right, we got a project. We're going to also create two new projects for when we deploy the applications for the development environment and stage environment. Uh, so I'll go create the dev project. I call it uh, task. Task is the name of the application we're going to use in this pipeline. It's a to-do list, a simple application running on uh, uh, JBoss um, EAP. Okay, also a stage project for a, a stage environment. If we're happy with our changes in the development environment, then we're going to deploy it in the stage environment. All right, let's get projects. I have three projects created ready for me. Another thing I need to do is uh, to allow um, the Jenkins container access OpenShift API so that it can interrogate it and figure out what other images are running, or uh, with Jenkins, we're gonna use Jenkins as slaves running as containers on Jenkins. So Jenkins is gonna discover what 
what images are available to use to be used as Jenkins slave. And for that, it needs to call Jenkins uh, OpenShift API. Uh, also, we're going to need to uh, download images from one project to the dev project and tag it in the other projects or deploy containers based on images. So we need to give access to um, Jenkins service account to, to be able to do this kind of operation through OpenShift API. And we do that through OC policy command, add role to user, and we give, give edit access to the, to the service account that runs uh, uh, Jenkins. And that is, since Jenkins is going to be running in the CI CD project, I use the default uh, service account for that. The same to the dev and stage project. All right, now we're good to go. Uh, I switch to the CI CD project. To look at the console also. We have our projects ready inside CI CD. We haven't instantiated any components yet. How are we going to instantiate the components? We have two templates here. One uses GitHub as a Git repository, the other one spins up a GOG instance that looks pretty much like GitHub but going to run in on OpenShift as a container. Um, you have those choices. In, in this demo, I'm going to use Gox to show you the full uh, uh, full CI CD flow. So I'm going to copy the URL to this template. Coc process this template so that it replaces the parameters in it with with uh, proper concrete values, and then create that. It's a bunch of objects for us, a number of services, pods, builds, deployments, and so on. In the project, all the components are up and running. We have a number of containers instantiated for us. We have uh, Gox, which is our Git repository. Right now it's empty. Uh, let's uh, register. Gox is using a password. Log in into Gox. We don't have any repositories yet, but uh, the application that I talked about, OpenShift Task, is available on GitHub. What we're going to do is that migrate that into GOGS. We can just import that repository and manage it within GOGS instead. So, what should we call it in GOGS? OpenShift Task, migrate. And now we have that project available inside GOGS running on OpenShift. What else we have? We have a Jenkins instance. We have a Nexus for uh, managing our uh, Maven artifacts. Uh, we have already configured Red Hat uh, GA Maven repository for uh, JBoss artifacts in it. And we also have the Postgres backends for SonarCube and GOGS and SonarCube, which is our code analysis tool. Since we haven't analyzed anything with it yet, so we don't have any projects empty. Once we run it, we'll, we'll get uh, more data. So uh, the last component is Jenkins. We have one project defined in it already, Task CD Pipeline. edit and take a look at the pipeline definition. It uses the pipeline plugin, uh, which is a really convenient way for building uh, continuous delivery pipelines on Jenkins. And on Jenkins 2, this plugin actually is brought built in and integrated into Jenkins itself. In uh, Groovy, we define our pipeline here. We say we want to run on nodes that are tagged with JDK 8 so that we have JDK installed there. And this Jenkins is configured already to use OpenShift uh, containers on OpenShift as a slave. So it's going to spin up a new container on OpenShift that is tagged with this, with this label, JDK 8, and run the job there so we can scale. We can run many, many jobs at the same time. Uh, it runs the build. So by default, this is going to GitHub to get the uh, source code for OpenShift the task application. We're going to modify this to make it go to our GOGS instance on uh, within our project so it's listening to on uh, ports 3000 and the user we defined and imported the project to was gox so this is the url for our repository in uh, in gogs uh, and the rest are the different steps of the pipeline we run the 
unit tests and uh, static analysis in, in parallel. So if one of them fails, the entire pipeline fails, then we push the artifacts to Nexus to manage them over there. And if that is successful, we'll start deploying onto the development environment, build the project from scratch. And if that is successful after running tests, we promote the image to the stage environment, tag it with the version, and uh, uh, deploy it into stage environment. So let's run this pipeline once and see how it looks like. Say build now, an instance of the pipeline is instantiated. This job is actually running in one new container on OpenShift. We'll look at OpenShift now, a new container, new pod is spin up. It doesn't have a name or anything. This is spin up by Jenkins. It tells OpenShift to create this pod and you see it uses JDK Jenkins as slate. This is something that we built as a part of this demo. In GitHub, you can see the, the code for that, the source for that. And uh, it's running the job there. So instantiate a pipeline and uh, the pipeline plugin is really nice, visualizes the pipeline as well. So you see the first step is uh, instantiated. If I click on log, you see what's exactly happening. It's cloning the source code from uh, Gogs. And afterward, it's gonna run uh, the Maven build and uh, start testing and static analysis at the same time. It's gonna take a few seconds. Pipeline moves on to the next stage, test and analysis. And if you look at the logs here, we see there are two stages running at the same time. We have uh, the, uh, the tests running, the Maven tests. And at the same time, we are doing the, the sonar analysis. So first download some artifacts since we're running this for the first time and then start running the static analysis on, uh, on the code. It can do the code coverage and uh, like extract any, any bad patterns that are used in the code. It's gonna take a few seconds, this one as well. Okay, take a second look at the log you see the sonar starts running the analysis at this stage download some of the jar files for sonar and then load the rules and run the analysis and both since both stages have been successful both running the tests and the static analysis uh, now we move on to the next stage of our pipeline which is pushing to nexus at uh, this stage it uh, pushes the war artifact that we have to to nexus for uh, archiving it in the repository If Nexus has been successful, deploy to the development environment, that also went fine, it run a few tests. Since that has been fine, tags the image and run to it and deploy to the stage environment. The whole pipeline has been successful. Let's go analyze a little what's been going on within our pipeline. Um, so if you go to Sonar, I refresh. You see a new project uh, shows up here. Give us EAP. Tasks, Jacks, Iris app. And uh, well, the code coverage is pretty red. We, we don't have really good coverage on this 17.6%. 17, if I click through, we can get a little more detail about which classes we have good uh, coverage and uh, which classes have bad coverage. So one class is green, so we have good coverage on one of our services, but the rest is pretty bad. It's red. And uh, how much line, how many line of code, how many bugs we see, vulnerabilities, uh, some signs of using bad. Uh, bad patterns in the code if I drill into it. So we get some uh, data about our code and in Sonar we can we can define rules so that if some of the rules are violated, uh, for example, the, um, the build fails. And that's always uh, a good way to to guard the quality of our code when we are running and uh, we are running a pipeline. So we get two two bugs that are notified by Sonar. We create issues based on that, so the developer goes fix them. 
And we also had Nexus as a part of the pipeline, so that when we build the artifacts, they are pushed into Nexus. If I go look into the repositories, into the snapshots, you see one war file is uh, pushed there. It's the version that is deployed here. And we use this war file for deploying into a container in OpenShift. So uh, in OpenShift, if I look at the dev project, see the application is up and running here, the tasks app. Uh, it doesn't have any GUI if I go to it, but uh, it has a set of REST services that uh, in the documentation we can, we can see how to call the REST services to create tasks and uh, get tasks out of that. Um, and since that has been successful, look at the stage environment. We also have a project here um, uh, with the task application, with a component here with the task application deployed. Uh, if you look at the images through the tag, we see that we have a, an image tag with the version of the application and that version coming from the palm file, that the same version we use in Nexus, uh, so that we can recreate a new containers based on this specific version of the image into our stage or other environments. So that's how it looks like a complete uh, pipeline all the way from uh, Say our source code to deploy it in multiple environment, multiple environment, and go through the pipeline as we go to the right. Get more confidence in our build. Uh, in the next part of these uh, uh, demos, we're going to look at how to make a change in the source code and trigger a deployment based on the changes we do in the configuration or the source code. Thank you for watching this demo, and uh, make sure you check out the next part.